Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab. Now, so far, what we have learned, we have learned about host profile. How do we go and extract a host profile from a reference host, attaching that profile to a target host and cluster. We have also learned about how do we go and perform host level customizations and performing compliance check. Now, as the last step of our host profile configurations, we are going to learn about host remediation. Now, what that remediation process does, it actually going to configure the parameters with the values what we have defined in the host profile to the target host and cluster. With that, let's get started with our host remediation process. So as you could see that we are logged into our vCenter server named as sbvcsa01. GoVMLab.local. Now let's go and browse our vCenter server. Now within that vCenter server, we have a data center named as SB data center. Let's go and browse our SB data center. And that's where we do see that we have a folder named as auto deployed host. We have a cluster named as auto deployed cluster. Let's go and browse our auto deployed cluster. And that's where we have a host named as SB ESXi02. Now that is the host which is going to be our target ESXi host and we are going to remediate this SP ESXi02 target host as a part of our host profile configurations and we'll do see that after successful remediation process this host gets configured with all those network configurations service configurations what we have defined in our host profile configurations. Now let's go and browse are another cluster named as SB cluster. So that's where we have a host named as SB ESXi01 and that is, our, that is our reference ESXi host what we are referring throughout our host profile lecture series. So now let's go and perform the host level remediation and what are the steps to do it. So click on our target ESXi host, click on summary tab and as you do see that it says that host is not in compliance with the attached profile and you also look at this UI host compliance UI it tells us that the status is not compliant and we why it says the status is not compliant I think we have already discussed in the previous lectures because there are a lot of configurations mismatch we do see between our reference ESXi host and our target ESXi host if you click on the details you will see that what those customizations we have done so far and what all the reasons it says that our target host is not in compliance with our source ESXi host. So that's a that's the thing where what we have discussed in our previous lectures and these are the host level customizations what we have done it. So now everything looks pretty good from the host customizations level and the host profile level. Please ignore that not compliance part because we know that a target host will not be having the exact configurations what our reference hosts are having it and that's pretty obvious. So now the next step is doing the remediation. So how do we go and do that? For that right there we have an option called remediate. So either you can click on this remediate option. As you could see that it gives us a very intuitive pop up saying that this is our target ESXi host which we are going to remediate. SB ESXi02. This, this host is a part of cluster named as auto deployed cluster. It says that customization required. No, because we have already done host level customizations and the state of the profile it says that connected because we have attached that profile to our target ESXi host. So everything looks good from the configuration perspective and it also says that our host is the compliance status we have done it on that specific time and the status was not compliant that we are well aware of it. Now then the small check what do you see it here that it says that automatically reboot the host that require remediation. Now what does that mean? It means that during the remediation process if there is a setting which requires a reboot of the host please not wait for the admin to go and trigger the manual reboot. As a part of remediation process, I want this process to go and do the host reboot as when it's required for successful remediation. So now that's a that's how we can go and do the remediation. So click on pre-check remediation. So that's always recommended 
that before doing the remediation process, we should always go and make sure that we do pre-check remediation. Now, there is another way we can perform the remediation. So let me show you that, that another way of doing the remediation. So click on cancel. Now right click on that host, go back to the host profile and there also we do see option for remediation. So there also you can directly click on remediate and it will pop up the same UI. So that's another way through which you can perform the remediation. So now we are pretty good from the remediation perspective. Let's click on the pre-check remediations. So because before performing remediation, we actually should do pre-check remediation. So as you could see that the pre-check remediation is in process now. And look at that. What it says. It says that a pre-check remediation is successfully done, but it, it could not start. The reason that it says very clearly that we have to put the host in maintenance mode. If you just click here, it says that a much more detailed information what is going to happen as a part of this remediation process such a detailed information this this intuitive ui really gives us so there are two things to remember here is that the first thing is before doing this remediation we need to put our host into maintenance mode and as a part of remediation process what is going to happen it is going to create a virtual switch one it is going to create port group production on our virtual switch one it is also going to create port group vMotion on our virtual switch one. And it is also going to create VM kernel NIC adapter on a vMotion port group with the address what we have defined during the host customization. Then it is going to configure NTP server with the NTP server IP as 172.2110.10. And then it is also going to change the startup policy for our SSH service and our esxi shell service if you just scroll down a little bit and as you do see that it is going to not only start ssh service but it it is also going to start our ntdp service such a elaborative information this ui gives us before doing the actual remediation that is the reason it is always recommended to perform the pre-check remediation before performing the actual remediation on that host so now click on remediate and click on remediate because we have already done the pre-check remediation and as you do see that <clears throat> as soon as we click on remediation as a part of remediation it also does the pre-check remediation and then now it has failed now look at that it clearly tells us that the remediation has failed and the reason is very obvious the remediation did not happen because we did not put our host into maintenance mode we forgot to put our host into maintenance mode so now let's go and put our host into maintenance mode right click on that host click on maintenance mode and click on enter maintenance mode now click on ok and we do see that our host has successfully put into maintenance mode right and that's the state of our host so now we are pretty good to get started with our remediation process so now Let's click on remediation again. Let me minimize this task. Click on remediation, click here to remediate and we'll do see that now the remediation process has started. And always before doing a remediation, it always does the pre-check remediation to make sure that a remediation happens very smoothly and very seamlessly. So now as you do see that the pre-check is being done and now it started doing the remediation. So now let's wait for a few minutes to get this process to be done successfully now once remediation process is done we'll go and review the the configuration what has been done on our target esxi host as a part of our host profile configuration now look at that if you see that the remediation process is successfully done look at that our remediation process is successfully done and the very important thing is look at the compliance status it says that our host is in compliant so now let me do one more thing let's click on check compliance and you will see that the host is in compliance status so i think that ui doesn't give much uh, a very better view of compliance status so let's do one thing go to policies and profiles Go to host profile 
click on monitor and now let's do one thing let's perform the compliance check again so select that host click on check compliance and now look at that the host profile compliance status is in compliant now what does that mean it it means that now our target host configurations are exactly same as our reference esxi host and because of which it's saying that our target host is, is in compliance with our host profile configurations and the parameter and value what we have defined it in our host profile so look at the compliance status and now it says the compliance status as compliant what does that mean it means that our target esxi host has been successfully configured with those parameters what we have defined in the host profile and because of which our target host is in compliance with the host profile and that clearly tells us that now our target esxi host configurations are exactly identical as our reference esxi host so now let's go and quickly go to our target esxi host and quickly validate those configurations so now let's put that host out of maintenance mode that's the first thing we should be doing it so we have put our host into a normal mode as you do see it here and it also sees the compliant status as in in compliant and we don't see any host in compliant error message anymore now let's quickly very validate those parameters or configurations so click on virtual switches and look at that a new virtual switch has successfully created on our target esxi host as you could see that it has created port group production and vmotion port group with the vlan id 100 and 200 what our reference esxi host was having it now also look at the services configuration and look at that our target esxi host has esxi shell and ssh service is in running state and before doing this remediation these services were in a stopped state so now the the remediation process has taken care of restarting these services as well now look at the time configuration and now look at that the ntp server is also successfully configured on our target esxi host the service is successfully running on our target esxi host and the ntp server is also configured successfully so now this conclude our lecture on host remediation where we have learned that how do we go and perform pre-check remediation which gives us a, such a elaborative information about the configurations which are going to be done on the target esxi host and then we have seen that a host has to be put into maintenance mode before we go and perform the remediation now once the remediation process is successfully done we have seen that how seamlessly host profile has taken care of replicating the configurations of a reference esxi host to our target esxi host so this conclude our lecture on host profiles we hope you enjoyed this lecture thanks for your time please like share and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you